So you like stories, do you? Well, I can tell you a wonderful story. It happened a long time ago, and I may be getting old, but I can remember it as if it were yesterday. I had a very important job then. I was a Chamberlain, Chamberlain Victor, the King's right-hand man. I ran the castle of King Gustav and his Queen Ingrid. And oh, what a country that was, full of flowers and greenery, full of happy people who loved life and enjoyed themselves. There was only one thing wrong. The king and queen didn't have a child. Oh, and poor Queen Ingrid so wanted a little baby. Many's the time I've seen a tear in her eye when she watched young children playing outside the palace. But one day, when I was sorting out the menu in the kitchen for a very important banquet, we were interrupted by a maid who rushed into the kitchen in great excitement. Oh, quick, everyone. Wonderful news. Wonderful news. Oh, I'm so excited. What is it? What are you jabbering about, girl? Oh, the joy it'll bring to them and our king and queen. You've been eavesdropping again, girl. Oh, no, Herr Victor. I was just passing the throne room and overheard the king. What? The king? What about the king? The doctor is with him now, and he said... Doctor? Doctor? Is the king ill? Oh, no. No, the queen is going to have a baby. Oh, wonderful, wonderful news. Just wait till everybody hears. We've got to tell them. We must... Wait, wait. Quiet, everybody. Quiet. Quiet. Now, let's have a bit of us around here. But, sir... Have you no work to do, girl? Why, yes, sir, but... Then get on with it. And that goes for all of you. And remember, not a word of this outside these walls. It's just gossip, you understand? Just gossip. Now, I shall go to His Majesty, and if in his wisdom he decides to give me some news, then an announcement should be made. An official announcement, mind. Until which time you will forget what has happened and say nothing. Do you understand? Yes, Herr Victor. Right. Then get on with your work while I attend His Majesty. <laughs> Oh, a baby for our queen, a baby, a baby for our queen, a baby for our queen. Oh, you look at that. Shh, you'll hear you. Who'd have believed it of old Victor, skipping down the corridor like that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 I say. Oh, 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 it <laughs> well, you couldn't keep news like that quiet for long. Besides, the king was so happy he couldn't wait to tell his people. <laughs> It went wild when the announcement was made because, you see, everybody shared his happiness. And so, months later, one early morning, the Queen gave birth to a baby girl. She was born just at sunrise, the most beautiful time of the day. So it was decided to call her Aurora, which means dawn. My subjects, I am proud to announce that Her Majesty gave birth to a baby girl today. She will be called Aurora, and I would ask you to join me in wishing her great future happiness. Happy birthday, little princess. You're as welcome as the spring. As the years go by, you'll see... Yeah. 
Majesty. Send for the Chamberlain. Yes, Your Majesty. Send for the Chamberlain. Send for the Chamberlain. Send for the Chamberlain. Send for the Chamberlain. Oh, you, you call for me, Your Majesty? Yes, Victor. Catch your breath now. I'm doing my best, Your Majesty. There's so stairs, Your Majesty. There's thousands of them in the castle. And perhaps you're getting a little too old, too, eh? What, me, Your Majesty? Never. I, I'm as young as... Oh, never mind, my friend. Sit here by the Queen and myself. Oh, thank you, Your Majesty. Oh, oh that's better. Victor, we have to plan the christening. I want it to be the greatest celebration our country has yet known. A public holiday, the streets decorated with flags and banners. I want a magnificent feast, and the court shall be filled with dignitaries and famous people from far and wide. Yes, Your Majesty. But think of the cost. Yes, my husband. It will be rather costly. Cost? It'll be worth all we spend, Ingrid. I want the christening of our daughter to be remembered as a great occasion. And it was, too. Oh, but the preparations and the redecorations. The banqueting hall alone cost a fortune. The wonderful rich colours of the carpets and curtains. Oh, I can see them now. And the palace staff really worked for a change. Cleaning and polishing everything until you could see your face in it. Normally, they were a lazy lot, you know. I was always ticking them off about it. Always finding a spot of dust here and a cobweb there. But not on this occasion. They took a special pride in their work. We all knew that this was going to be a high spot in the history of our country. I mean, after all, everybody was coming. Kings, queens, titled people, every famous person in the land, and a few from outside, too. As a matter of fact, the guest list was a bit of a problem. Gustav, we've spent so long deciding who will receive invitations, but we've forgotten the most important person of all. Really, my love, and who is that? I'm serious. Who is to be godmother to our baby? It has not been decided. Oh, yes, it has, my queen. I think you'll agree with my decision. The person must be kind, wise, and able to advise our child. And because our child will be so precious to us, able to protect the baby, too, in many ways that we cannot. The seven sisters are the only people that can fulfill that task. You're right, Gustav, of course. With their magic powers, they'll be able to give the child all that we cannot. They shall be godmothers. I will write the invitations personally. And that's how it came about. Seven godmothers. Overdoing it a bit, really. And a bit unusual, too. Because, well, you, you see, they were fairies. People who could conjure up things. Now, there's not many around today. But we were lucky to have seven in our country at that time. Now, I don't mind admitting that I was a bit sceptical, a bit suspicious about all this magic business. I mean, it, it could have all been trickery, couldn't it? Not that I'd ever actually seen any magic, at least not until the day of that christening, that is. And so the invitations for the great day were sent out all over the place, including those for the seven godmothers. Uh, let's see now. My memory's not as good as it was. What, what were their names? I've... Let's see. Dottie, Sophie, Annie, Dancy, Millie, Lottie, and Amelia. Yes, we've all received our invitations. And we're all going to be godmother to the baby. How wonderful! Wonderful, wonderful day. It's a wonderful, wonderful day today. Everything's going our way today. Wonderful, wonderful day. Wonderful, wonderful day. There is laughter in all that we say today. What seems to turn into play today? Wonderful, wonderful day. Rain clouds are suddenly clear.
Sister, so excited, ordering new dresses and polishing up their fairy wands, and simply counting the hours for the christening. Rain clouds are suddenly clearing, making a path for the sun. Preparations, the great day finally arrived. And what a day it was. Never have I seen such pomp and ceremony. The streets of the great city were full of people, people from the towns, from the country, people from other lands, all dressed in fine clothes and bearing gifts to the castle. Oh, you should have seen those colours. They were dazzling, and the food for the feast afterwards. It makes my mouth water just to think of it. Meats, fish, poultry, sweets and fruits and cream. Oh, great big tables loaded down with it. And the bills, dear, oh dear. After the ceremony, everybody came to the banqueting hall to enjoy the feast. The seven godmothers were given places of honour. And each had her own gold plate engraved with her name. And a gold knife and fork and spoon encrusted with diamonds. I thought it was a bit extravagant myself, but the king insisted. These were the most important guests, he said. And when people came to present their christening gifts to the Princess Aurora, I saw what he meant. People gave gold, silver, diamonds, beautiful clothes and all sorts of fabulous things. But when the fairy godmother stood up to offer their gifts, they made all the others look like nothing at all. My name is Dulcie, short for Dulcibella, which means beauty. And that's my gift to Aurora. She shall be the most beautiful girl in all the world. My name's Sophia, but everyone calls me Sophie. It means the same, wisdom. And that's my gift to the baby. She shall be witty and wise. I'm Annie, or Anna, which means grace. Aurora shall be graceful of movement, whether she walk, run, or dance. Millie is my name, or Millicent, which means song. So with the wave of my wand, I grant that the little girl shall have a singing voice to outdo any songbird in the world. My name is Dotty, a short for Dorothea, which means, um, which, which means, oh, Amelia. Oh, Dotty, you're incorrigible. It means goodness. <laughs> oh, yes, it means goodness. So Aurora shall always be good-natured. And as befits my name, Amelia, the princess shall be industrious in whatever she attempts to do in life. I'm the youngest here, and my name is Lottie. And then it happened. Before the youngest godmother could bestow her gift, there was a sudden rumbling like thunder. The doors burst open and a great wind swept right through the vast room, knocking over tables and chairs and blowing the guests all over the place. And there in the doorway stood a tall, thin, wizened old woman hunched over a walking stick. She was dressed all in black, and her long, flowing clothes flapped in the wind. <laughs> so, what's this? A celebration, and I'm not invited? Oh, goodness, it's Morgana. Everybody stood stunned by the surprise of it all. I think I was the first to recover. I was told that the unexpected visitor was Morgana. Morgana, it seems, was also a fairy but a rather nasty piece of work by all accounts. She had shut herself away in her tower high on a mountain 
and had not been seen for 50 years. So everybody thought she must be dead. Well, she obviously wasn't. And it didn't take the brains of an ant to see that she was in a decidedly bad mood at being overlooked. Although King Gustav did his best to make amends. Do come in, madam. My name is Morgana. Then come in, Morgana. And accept my apology that you did not receive an invitation personally. But there was an open invitation for all who wished to attend our celebration. Morgana hobbled across the room and stood glaring at the tables laden for the feast. What's this then? Gold plates engraved with the names of my fairy associates. And jeweled cutlery too. But I see no plate engraved. Morgana! Do me a favour. If you're going to do that again, would you mind warning us? Did you forget? Or deliberately avoid me, I wonder? It was a most embarrassing moment for our king and queen. And a dangerous one, too. Morgana looked angry enough to do something really nasty. For our omission, we apologise most sincerely. But you must give us the opportunity to make amends. Victor! Go fetch the most valuable jeweled cup in our palace that we may give our guests some wine. And needless to say, I had to go right up to the royal chamber to find it. And oh, oh, those stairs. I hated the sight of them. They wore me out. By the time I returned to the banqueting hall, Morgana was lording it over the other guests. She picked at a bit of pigeon pie on the table, but no matter what anybody did to please her, she was determined to stay in a bad mood. She prowled about the room with everybody getting out of her way. And, of course, there was too many guests who hadn't the faintest idea who she was. But who is that strange woman? Her name's Morgana. Some call her a witch. Well, I don't see why everyone's bowing and scraping to her. Neither do I. Yet there's something about her that's a bit unnerving. Well, she doesn't frighten me. <laughs> oh, I don't, eh? Well, there are many that quake at the name Morgana. Oh, no. Here we go again. And so they should. Because while some people enjoy doing good, Morgana just loves being bad. <laughs> I'm a very wicked fairy, I am wicked and contrary, and there's nobody that's wickeder than me. Oh, when it comes to evil doing, I would bring the world to ruin, and I'd never bat an eyelid just to see. <laughs> never bat an eyelid just to see. I'm the wickedest of witches, I've a cave that's full of riches, and a night that's black as pitches, quite the best. When I fly out like an eagle on a mission that is evil, then I'm really far more wicked than the rest. <laughs> really far more wicked than the rest. In the school of wickedry, I've a diploma and degree for being quite obnoxious and obscene. When I zoom out on my broomstick, on my fly around the roomstick, then I'm horrible, I'm wicked, and I'm mean. <laughs> I'm horrible, I'm wicked, and I'm mean. With my knowledge and my potions, I can dry up all the oceans, I can turn the mighty mountains into dust. And it isn't that I want to, no, it isn't that I need to, it is really just a feeling that I must. <laughs> Really just a feeling that I must I'm a very wicked fairy I succeed in being scary A very wicked fairy Am I?
again. Beautiful young lady, no doubt. But at some time, she will prick her finger on the spindle of a spinning wheel. And she will die. was in an uproar. Poor Queen Ingrid fainted. Everybody was furious. What a dreadful thing to do. That's not a gift, it's a curse, isn't it? She should be punished for saying such a thing. Yes, heartless creature. Guards, arrest that woman. But it was too late. Morgana walked out in a huff and immediately the wind blew all the guards to the ground. We were all blinded by a flash of light. And when we'd recovered... Morgana was gone. Vanished into thin air. Well, I don't mind telling you it caused a right commotion. The guests were all muttering among themselves. The ladies were crying. Others were trying to comfort the queen and the king looked quite put out. And then the youngest fairy stepped up to the cradle and said, I have yet to bestow my gift to the child. And although I cannot undo what my wicked sister has done... I can at least change it. My name is Lottie, or Letitia, which means happiness. And there shall be a happy ending to the story for Aurora. Yes, she will prick her finger, but she won't die. She will just fall into a deep sleep, from which she will be woken a hundred years later by the kiss of a handsome prince. That is my gift. Oh, thank you, Lottie. I would like to do more, Your Majesty, but it is not within my power. The King and I are most grateful, nevertheless. Yes, and we're grateful to all of you here for coming to this celebration today and for your many gifts. Morgana would ruin the occasion, but we must not let her succeed. This must be a happy day. Musicians, music, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy yourselves. Come along, come along. <laughs> <laughs> and the christening wasn't spoiled after all. Mind you, everyone was a bit concerned about that bad spell. And frankly, I was a little surprised at this fairy business. I still don't understand how one fairy can outmagic another. Still, as I said earlier, I'm no expert on fairies and spells and things. The king put a brave face on the matter, and the celebrations went on well into the night. Few people got a wink of sleep, mostly because they danced the night away. Myself, well, I had shocking indigestion from all the rich food, and the king, because he spent the dark hours pacing his room thinking about that bad spell. Little wonder that early the next morning he sent for me. Page! Yes, your majesty? Fetch me the chamberlain. Yes, your majesty. Send for the Chamberlain. Send for the Chamberlain. Send for the Chamberlain. Send for the Chamberlain. Oh. Oh. You sent for me, Your Majesty? Yes, Victor, but catch your breath first. Thank you, Your Majesty. It's those stairs, you see. Yes, Victor, I know, I know. Look, here, sit beside me. Thank you, thank you Your Majesty. I've been thinking, Victor, we must do something about it. Well, might I suggest that we have the council chamber on the ground floor? Now, that would be a good remedy. Council chamber? Well, Victor, I'm not talking about your puffing your way upstairs. I mean the bad spell. Oh. Oh, yes, yes, Your Majesty. Morgana said that Aurora would prick her finger. That would be the cause of the trouble. I know the good fairy softened the curse and Aurora will sleep and not die. Uh, and it's not that I don't trust her judgment, but... Uh... Your Majesty, that's exactly what I think. Can't be too careful when it comes to this magic business. It could go all wrong. So, what do you suggest? Prevention is better than cure. We will burn all the spinning wheels in the country. Right. We will burn... All the spinning wheels in the country? That's a bit strong, isn't it, my lord? It's the only way. If there are no spinning wheels, then the princess cannot prick her finger, and the curse cannot operate. Oh, 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 dead clever, if I may say so, Your Majesty. So put the proclamation in hand at once. All the spinning wheels in the country to be burned or destroyed. It shall be done, Your Majesty. And it was. 
But have you noticed how, when it comes to destroying things, people set to work with a will they never reserve for any other work? The whole business, of course, got right out of hand. Everything with a sharp point had to go. No needles or pins meant no sewing. No forks meant we had our food from spoons. And with teeth like mine, it was murder with no sharp knives to cut it. And as for the army, well, we didn't really have one with no swords to arm the soldiers. We must have been the most ragged, uncouth, and yet the happiest looking lot of people you've ever seen. Because, of course, we'd all done our bit to protect something we loved, the little Princess Aurora. And for a time, it worked. But that, of course, is the rest of my story. Oh, I must have dozed off for a moment. Now, where was I? Oh, yes. As I said, for a while all went well. The Black Fairy Morgana made several attempts to trap Princess Aurora. But always the seven godmothers were on hand to ruin her plans. So the princess grew into a fine little girl and then into a beautiful young lady. And one day, when she was walking in the forest near the castle, with the godmothers not far behind her, her thoughts were as romantic as any young girl's. Will I ever find someone to be the one for me? Will I ever meet somebody who Sounds horrible, doesn't it? Well, Morgana watched and waited. Even when she was in her tower miles away, she was able, so I'm told, to see what happened at the castle. was absolutely unaware of any danger and too lost in her own thoughts. What a lovely day. The forest looks so beautiful. The ground all carpeted with flowers and the trees covered with blossoms. I wonder why I feel so sad. Perhaps it's because I never have any freedom with everyone watching over me. It's not as if there is any danger. I heard that, Aurora. Oh, Aunt Amelia, you shouldn't have been eavesdropping. Anyway, you worry unnecessarily. And you, young lady, have no idea how dangerous Morgana can be when she sets her mind to something. That's right, Aurora. It makes me shiver just thinking about Morgana. Amelia, Sophie, Letty, Dotty, all of you, don't think I'm ungrateful. But I never get the chance to meet any young people with you always hovering in the background. I dream of meeting a fine young prince one day, but between you and Daddy's guards, he wouldn't dare to speak to me. 
There'll be plenty of time for young men when you're older. But I'm a woman now. Oh, isn't it romantic? Dotty. Oh, if only some handsome young fairy prince would come and carry me off. Well, I shouldn't raise your hopes, Dotty. Whatever else happens, I think that unlikely. You could always magic one up, Dotty. It's not the same. Why can't fairies be more like humans? <laughs> now, don't listen to their silliness, Aurora. Aurora, where has she gone? Oh, the naughty girl. She's run off while we're talking. Then we must find her quickly, before Morgana does. This is just the opportunity she wants. Use all your magic senses, but find her. And, of course, the fairy godmother, Amelia, was right. There was Morgana sitting up in her tower, planning a terrible revenge. <laughs> now, I have you, my young beauty. Without those do-gooders to protect you, you'll soon fall prey to a trap. turned into a crow and an ugly one too to match her looks in real life <laughs> yes well it was no laughing matter really oh no you see Morgana as she flew to the forest carried a toy she had magicked up it was a pine cone but unlike any you or I have ever seen it was covered in jewels and the light caught it this way and that and it glinted like a thousand eyes you couldn't resist picking it up if you saw it but hidden inside was a pin, ready to make the curse come true if Aurora touched it. Now it would be a race as to who found the princess first, the godmothers or Morgana. Oh, Amelia, it's all my fault. No, it isn't, Dotty. Now, now, don't cry. We're all to blame. If we hadn't been so concerned with ourselves, she wouldn't have slipped away unnoticed. But where can she be? Well, she can't be far. Now, come on, girls. Use your magic powers. We must find her. She's in great danger. And she was. As the princess entered the clearing in the forest, Morgana, disguised as the crow, dropped the trinket right in front of her and started cawing to attract her attention to that dangerous toy. What's that? Oh, you naughty bird. Where did you steal that from, I wonder? It looks like a pine cone, but it's covered in diamonds. Why, it's beautiful. I'd better take it back to the castle and try to find out who it belongs to. And the princess bent to pick up that deadly toy, little knowing that if her fingers touched it, that hidden pin would prick her finger and she would... Stop! Princess Aurora, don't touch that. Oh, Amelia. Oh, thank goodness we were in time. Yes, a moment more and... Oh, it doesn't... Her thinking about... <laughs> what are you talking about? Another of that Morgana's nasty tricks. Watch! And Amelia turned the trinket over with a magic wand and instantly triggered the pin which shot out from amongst the diamonds. Its point so sharp, it flashed in the sunlight. You see, Princess, that was meant for you. But why does she hate me so? Because she's a nasty, spiteful old woman. I wonder where she is. She can't be far away. That crow, flying away there. That's one of her disguises. Where's my magic wand? 
Magic spirits, hear my plea and grant my wish most speedily. Conjure a tree where I'd have it grow and teach a lesson to that false crow. And with a wave of her wand, Amelia put a tree right in the path of the flying Morgana. <laughs> oh, serves her right. And so Morgana limped home to her tower with her body and her pride bruised by her defeat. But she was determined to try again. And the seven godmothers knew it too and resolved to be even more careful and watchful for the princess's safety. But all the danger tended to be pushed to the back of their minds in the days ahead. For soon it would be the princess's birthday and a time for great celebration. Hey. Yes, your majesty. Summon the chamberlain. Yes, your majesty. Calling the chamberlain. Send for the chamberlain. Send for the chamberlain. Send for the chamberlain. You, you sent for me, your majesty. Catch your breath, Victor. Yes, your majesty. I'm catching it. But you know, it, it's the stairs. Yes, I know, I know. That be the death of me. Rest yourself while I give you my instructions. In a week, Princess Aurora comes of age and I would have a celebration for her birthday. The court jeweler must design a special crown. A crown? We must have a feast. A feast? Everyone must be invited. Everyone invited? It must be one of the most splendid parties our country has known. A splendid party, yes. I want our palace, the city, decorated as never before. This must be a celebration to remember this coming of age of my daughter. It must be even more memorable than her christening. I will oversee all the arrangements personally, Your Majesty. It was the king's way of saying thank you to everyone for helping to protect his daughter from the wicked Morgana's curse all these years. As I told you before, I wasn't too sure of that fairy magic but it certainly seemed to have worked. And, of course, the godmothers would be honoured guests at the party. So we began the preparations for the party of the century. Cooks, maids, soldiers, carpenters, everybody had a job to do. There's going to be a party, there's going to be a ball. They're coming from the villages, the cities and the towns. The sorting out the jewellery, the pressing all the guns. There's going to be a party, there's going to be a ball. They're busy in the dining room, the kitchen and the hall. Chipping, chopping, chipping, chopping, chipping, chopping, chipping, chopping, chopping up potatoes all day long. I see you're busy with the soup. I'm busy with the fish. There's never been so tasty or delectable a dish. Busy with the venison, the mutton and the veal. There'll never be in history a more delicious meal. Oh, good grief, the roast beef is getting overcooked. My good man, the roast lamb is being overlooked. The pies won't rise. It seems to me that they could be a trifle oversized. Polish up the silver, you haven't time to halt. If the pepper and the mustard, the vinegar and salt. The kitchen's full of dramas, we the temperamental chef. Bring the raisins and sultanas, hurry up, man, you deaf. We've got to make a birthday cake. We've got to make a birthday cake. Today is such a great day. A day when we can say, Happy birthday, little princess. You are 21 today. Chipping, chopping, chipping, chopping, nothing must go wrong. Chipping, chopping, chipping, chopping, chopping up potatoes all day long. There's going to be a party, there's going to be a ball. They're coming from the villages, the cities and the towns. They're sorting out the jewelry and pressing on their guns. There's going to be a party, there's going to be a ball. They're busy in the dining room, the kitchen and the hall. Chipping, chopping, chipping, chopping, chipping, chopping, chipping, chopping, chopping on potatoes all day long. There's going to be a party. Come on. Only one person in the kingdom was not to be invited. Morgana, of course. 
The trouble is, there's just no stopping some people. So on the day of the party, when we were all making final preparations, Morgana was too. Time to change into my disguise again. To fly to the palace unnoticed. Hear me, spirits. For this my task, I need to hide beneath a crow's skin by which I ride to trap the princess wherever she run. Magic powers, let it be done! And in that disguise, Morgana flew to the castle and settled on the battlements where she could spy into the princess's room and wait for an opportunity. Oh, isn't it exciting? A party! And you look so beautiful, Aurora. Thank you, Dottie. Yes, you really do, Aurora. Thank you, Sophie. Yes, but just because this is a celebration doesn't mean any of us can relax. We must muster all our magic forces to defeat Morgana. An occasion like this would be too good for her to miss. Oh, surely not, Amelia. Oh, yes. Now, Sophie, you will check the kitchen. Dulcie, the hall. Um, Annie, the courtyard. Millie, the banqueting room. Lottie, you will stand guard outside this room until I return. You make us sound like soldiers, Amelia. And so we are. I just know that if we get through tonight, Aurora's coming of age... She will be free of Morgana's curse forever. Hooray! But, Amelia, what about me? What shall I do? Nothing, Dotty. That will be safer for all of us. You will stay with the Princess Aurora and keep her company till the guests arrive. Oh, very well, Amelia. Right. All of you, follow me. Don't look so sad, Dotty. Keeping me company is important too, you know. Yes, I suppose it is. Oh, it is so romantic. <laughs> you look so lovely in your party dress. I, I could cry. Oh, Dotty, and I don't have a handkerchief. Nor I. Then can't you magic one? Oh, no, I'm never allowed to do magic on my own. Why? Well, we... it always goes wrong, you see. Then you'd better find my maid and ask her for one. <laughs> Perhaps you're right, Aurora. Are you sure you'll be all right? Of course. Who could harm me here? Unfortunately, Morgana could. And as soon as Dottie left the room, Morgana changed herself from a crow to a beautiful songbird and flew into the princess's room. Oh, what's that? Why, what a beautiful bird. It must have flown into the room by mistake. Oh, no, don't be afraid. I won't hurt you. Let me help you. And, of course, the princess tried to pick up the little bird to take it to the window and release it. But each time she came near, the bird flew ahead again. It led her across the room where she suddenly saw an opening in the wall that she had never noticed before. Which was hardly surprising because Morgana had only just magicked it up. Through the opening there were stairs. And upwards flew the little bird with Aurora following, very concerned for its safety. Little did she know that it was she herself who was in danger. Dottie realised this immediately. She returned to the princess's room and found her gone. Aurora! Aurora! Oh, my goodness! She's disappeared! It's happened! This is Morgana's work! Come quickly, everyone! Come quickly! But none of her sisters heard her cries. Morgana had seen to that. There was only one thing for it. Dottie would have to magic them to the rescue if she could only remember the spell. Magic spirits, hear my plea. Here, bring... Oh, no, that's not right. Um, magic spirits, hear my plea. Bring here... Oh, dear, that doesn't sound right either. I'm so flustered. And every second was vital. Because the princess had followed the little bird to the top of the tower steps and stood in the entrance to a small room. In front of her stood a strange piece of furniture that she had never, ever seen before. It was a spinning wheel. And the little bird sat on the wheel only inches from the sharp point of the spindle. Oh, dear. 
Time is so vital. Now, Dottie, pull yourself together. What are those magic words? Magic spirits, hear my plea. Bring my sisters at once to me. Danger, danger, here is prone. And I am powerless alone. And it worked. Dotty, what is it? The princess has gone. Up there, I think. Quick, follow me, all of you. And pray we are not too late. In the room above, as the princess reached out her hand to hold the little bird, it hopped onto the deadly spindle. Its sharp needle point a dagger to the unwary. And still the princess, kind, trusting girl, did not suspect. Come on, little bird, don't be afraid. I won't hurt you. Aurora, wait! But it was too late. Oh, oh I've cut my finger. Oh, it's bleeding. Oh, and I do feel sleepy. And so it happened. The thing we had all struggled for years to prevent had happened. Morgana had won. Oh, it was a sad day for our king and queen. In fact, for all of us. Our beautiful princess lying as if dead. By the time I struggled up those horrible stairs, I met King Gustav carrying his daughter to her room where he laid her on the bed. And we all stood about, crying, not knowing what to do. But it was Amelia who came to the rescue again. Princess Aurora will waken in 100 years to a strange world with no friends. Oh, Gustav! There, there, my queen. Unless... Uh, unless what? You allow yourselves to be put to sleep as well. Then you will awaken as she does. I have to admit, I hesitated a bit at the thought, but King Gustav made the decision for all of us. Yes, that's the only solution. Weave your magic, Amelia. And she did. Magic spirits, work your powers and hold all within these towers, within these walls, rooms and chamber for one hundred years in slumber. And it was an amazing thing. But immediately everybody in the country began to nod off. Even me. My eyes became heavy. My limbs felt tired. And I just... I... Couldn't seem to stay awake. Oh, excuse me. You see that? Just remember it. And I was almost asleep again. And that's how it was for everybody in the castle. The cook went to sleep preparing the food, the staff laying the table, the soldiers at their posts, even the horses in the stables. All were sound asleep. But it didn't end there. Amelia also sprinkled some of that fairy dust or whatever it is, you know, over the forest that surrounded the castle. And everything began to grow wild. Trees grew so tall and thick you couldn't see past them. Brambles and bushes became so entwined you couldn't cut through them. Those fairy godmothers completely sealed off the castle and everybody in it. So we were safe in our slumbers. Of course, I didn't find any of this out until I woke up, like everyone else. But it seems we slept for 100 years, and then a handsome young man from another land passed through our country and caught a glimpse of one of the towers over the trees. So he asked one of the seven old ladies living in a house at the edge of the forest who lived in that castle. Well, young man, it's so long ago that people around here have forgotten. But in that castle has slept these past 100 years... A beautiful princess. Only a handsome prince can break the spell and wake her with a kiss. Well, of course, it was that Amelia fairy woman up to her tricks again. She knew all along that he was a prince. And she had decided that he was the one for Princess Aurora. She'd been filling his mind with dreams about the princess for months before and led him without his knowing to this particular spot. And when the young man drew his sword to cut a way through the forest, where so many had failed before, the undergrowth just parted, leaving him an absolutely uninterrupted pathway straight up to the castle. There he found us all, still fast asleep and covered in dust too. And he found the princess, 
and with one kiss, he woke her up and they immediately fell in love. It woke us up too, of course. And we were soon all celebrating the wedding of that happy young couple. Oh, <laughs> it was a happy awakening in more ways than one. Well, it all happened a long time ago. In fact, I do seem to have lived a shocking long time. Perhaps it's something to do with all that fairy dust. Mind you, I'm still not really convinced about all that magic business. But there must be something in it, mustn't there? I mean, because after all, everything ended happily, didn't it? There was one thing for sure, though. <laughs> Although I slept a hundred years, I still... <sighs> never seem to... Oh, yeah, I've never seemed to get enough sleep. You'll have to excuse me.